Hi, I'm Jean Watson. I'm delighted to welcome you to the study of caring science and the theory of human caring. Many hospitals are now using this work, and it might be helpful for me to give a little summary of what does it mean to enter into caring science. First of all, it makes explicit the values, the philosophical orientation toward humanity of honoring the unity of the mind, body, spirit. It provides the moral and ethical codes by which guides their practice and it really invites us back to the heart of their humanity because in a model of caring science we address the whole person and we also are invited to take this work back to the heart of their profession and the heart of humanity because it's really in our heart where caring resides. It's compassion is where caring resides in our hearts. It's our truth, our beauty, the very source of our humanity is in our heart. So caring science and heart science are coming together now to make a stronger case for the importance scientifically as well as philosophically and ethically for caring practices in our life and in our world for ourselves, for our patients, for families, and for the public at large. Within the context of caring science, the theory itself contains the 10 Caritas processes. These 10 Caritas processes are absolutely universal practices of human caring. These practices, this languaging of the 10 Caritas processes provides a very philosophical but a languaging foundation to explain to ourselves and others, what is the phenomenon of human caring? If we do not have our language to define our phenomena, how can we look at outcomes? How can we look at documentation? How can we even see? My definition of theory is the Greek word theoria, which literally means to see. So we're doing these practices every day, but when you have the language to see what you're doing, and to name them, then you begin to transform yourself and your system. So within the Caritas processes and within the foundation of the philosophy, the ethics, the values, where the theory lives is in those caring moments. When you walk into that patient's room, you seek to see who is that spirit-filled person. And you never know how we're touching the life of another human being. So the caring moment is the essence of this theory. And at the same time, once we realize that's where the theory lives, then it requires our practices for self-growth, for loving kindness with ourselves and each other. And it requires us to pay attention to our authentic presence, to our intentionality, to our consciousness, and to the ways in which we enter the space with another human being. So we build in rituals and very concrete practices, whether it be hand washing to cleanse and make transitions, or whether it's pausing before you enter the patient's room, connecting with your heart of your compassion, or whether it's stopping mid-step or mid-sentence, or whether it's starting a meeting with a pause, a breathing, and entering out and emptying out. Those are all informing what happens in that caring moment that affects us for as long as we live. And lastly, the theory allows us to still be doing all the doing we're doing, but now they can be reframed and seen as caring and healing modalities because of the way in which they are been administered or being offered to another human being. So this is a bigger context for the nature of our work, but it gives us language and meaning and purpose for what we have been doing all of these many years. And we now take it from the margins as ad hoc practices and make it a full mature professional practice model to transform ourselves and our systems from the inside out. God bless you on this journey and namaste.